Hi, it's Angie from Canterbury Trails Farm, and I'm going to show you how to loom knit a Christmas wreath. I guess you could probably use it for any kind of wreath. Um, what you need is one of the round um, looms that come with the standard set. This is, happens to be the smallest one because I'm making a small wreath. You can use any size you want. Uh, so we're going to make a long tube like you would for a sock. Um, so. Um, or a very long hat, but it's going to be a long tube. So I, I don't know exactly how how many inches I want until I get it and to see the, the size that I want. I'm going to knit the tube and um, we will join it at the, when we get it all done, we'll fill it with fiber fill and then we will join it, sew it together. And then we'll use pieces of yarn to tie off like um, sections um, to make it like a wreath all the way around it. And then I'm going to use a daisy wheel. Um, if, you, if you're familiar with those, they were very popular in the 70s. They were very popular in the 20s is where they started. Um, so you can find them, you can find the ones, the, the, the yellow plastic ones, really easy on eBay, used. Um, I find them, I see them in Goodwill all the time. Um, so uh, if you don't have one of those, pick those up. Because I, I also use those to, in one of my loom knitting videos where I loom knit chair uh, table leg booties, chair and table leg booties to go over so your chairs don't screech across the floor. Um, but So I'm going to use the little daisy wheel to um, do like red poinsettias with black centers and um, to put on the wreath. So it's going to be really cute. And I'm doing a really small one. Um, uh, probably for a door out at the farm is what I'm thinking about. Um, it just make a little sort of like a country decor. Um, I'm using just this Christmas green, and I also have this huge. Um, you can see it right here. This huge spool um, of it's very soft yarn. It's almost like a cashmere, and it's a bright green. So I I thought I, whenever you can break up the solid color, it gives more definition and depth and contrast to your project just like painting uh, you don't want to do a tree if you're painting a tree you don't want to paint it all the same color green because um, the tree is not all the same color green there's all different kinds of shades of green in there and browns and other colors so I'm just going to use the two uh, Christmas green and then I'm going to use this big spool let me give you a tip too if you love yarn there is a seller on eBay, and I'll try to um, list it in my, the comments down there if I remember. That is a um, an outlet. They sell the overruns for these are like great big spools. I got this huge spool for like three bucks. Um, they have all kinds of colors, but the thing is, you have to buy the huge spool, and um, they have like a UPS deal. So really, in order to, make, I think it's like eighteen dollars for shipping. So. In order to average out the shipping, you sort of want to get about four at a time. They have deals and stuff on their eBay. You can pick out the colors you want. And um, so, anyway, so I got this huge thing because I thought this and a purple, I got this deep purple would make a nice um, afghan. But there's so much of it, it's not like I'm going to run out of it anytime soon. So, um, anyway, I'll, I'll try to link into that because that's a, it's an enormous deal. I've got grays and browns. i got like every color. It is a really fine yarn, as you can see. Here's the regular. So it, I think it's good to, um, if I was using it for something, I would double it. But I think it's good for adding, you know, an extra color in the project. So anyway, so you're going to start out and you're going to do it. If you if you don't know how to loom knit, go check out my intro to loom knitting. It's also with a sock video, so you just want to watch the first part of it. And then go check out the hat video. Uh, because this is what we're doing. We're using the hat technique. I've already gone around twice because you have to go around twice and I'm just going to knit and I'm going to assume since you're doing project videos that you know how to work this loom. If you don't, please go check the hat video. I really show detail and how to do it and the intro. Uh, it talks about the different looms and the way to do it. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just knit um, on this loom. Um, my kid's fixing to go to bed and I am going to knit on this loom for a couple hours, watch some news and watch some show. I like to watch old time um, movies, the old black and white 30s and 40s movies. It's just something I like. I'm going to watch me a show and I'm going to knit for a couple hours and we'll see how far I get and then I'll come back and um, we'll see how far I am. It might take a couple nights to do this project. But uh, so get your Christmas green uh, yarn ready and get your small loom 
And uh, you can join me on making this uh, cute little Christmas loom knitted wreath. I did my knitting and um, I ended up to get, because I used the uh, five inch diameter loom, this the small blue one. So when to get the proportion that I wanted on this wreath, um, I went ahead and knitted 32 inches the fabric or you know of the of the knitted thing here and I did the remember I did the Christmas green with the like light and lime light green sort of thing so I did like a 32 inch tube so now I am ready to take off take it off the loom and um, if you haven't ever taken anything off the loom if you watch the you watch the hat I really explain how to do that in depth but I'm assuming everyone doing projects already knows the basics of how to do this so you want your big your big needle you can use plastic I like the metal ones and we're just gonna go around and we're going to take this off we are not going to tighten it though we're just taking it off the loom right now in fact I'm going to use the same yarn to connect the two ends together so make sure you leave enough um, yarn to work with here and I did not do a cuff to when I started the tube it's just a, it's just a big long tube is what it is Do not draw it up. Just remove your loom. Okay. Now I have the tube. And I have my yarn on my needle. And we're going to sort of stick this over here so it doesn't get lost. Now what I want to do is I need some fiber fill. And I'm going to just stuff my tube. Now, um, if I did mine uh, three yarns thick. The, the green was, the light green was really... Um, The light green was really thin, so I would have had to have done something else. Um, it almost came out too thick. The last one I did, which I no longer had because I gave it away, um, it was squishier, if that's a good way of saying it. And I think it was squishier because I only used one thickness of yarn. But, on the other hand, if you do it too uh, with too big of a weaving like pattern between the rows you're going to be able to see the fiber fill in the tube so if that happens then um, it's sort of like the um, pumpkins that I did if you watch the pumpkin tutorial that if you use a, like a solid color you're going to have to do almost like a fabric tube in the inside um, to camouflage your fiber fill so you know it, it's up to you like, you know what you want to do there how much work you want to go through so I'm packing this sort of loosely because like I said I'm really not happy with the thickness of the tube um, if it's looser when you when we go to we're going to tie it into segments um, like if you if you watch the pumpkin video, I tied the pumpkin into segments. Well, it's the same sort of um, idea with the wreath. Let me see if I can move some of that. I think I got packed too deep in there. Um, where we're going to make segments on the wreath. Okay, so I have my tube, and I have it pretty much stuffed. I tried to do it loose since my knitted fabric has turned out stiffer than I want it. I tried to do it a looser stuffing. You you figure, you know, you can do, um, after you watch this tutorial, and if you decide to make this craft, you can sort of um, play with it and see what you like. All right, so I got my yarn still on here. 
And getting it all together here is a little bit tricky. So you want to put... <laughs> it's poking out. You want to go ahead and tuck it in there for right now. The two ends. And then you can pull it just tight enough to hold it there for a minute while you sew it. Um, so I'm just picking up just sort of randomly random loop and then another one over here and I'm just going to go around and I'm going to sew the, whole, the two ends of my tube I'm sort of just also just tucking the edge of the, the top tube that is not on the inside I'm just sort of also tucking it under as I sew just so I, I don't have any raw edges under there all right and when you get to the last in there just do an extra stitch for some strength and now I have sort of like a big donut is what it is sort of like a donut Big knitted donut. Okay, now what we're gonna do? Um, well, I know I wanted to start in the center where um, I stitched it together. So you just want to cut off a piece of yarn. I'm just going to wrap it around twice. And tie it in a knot. Okay. Now I'm going to do one exactly up at the top, opposite. I think I'm going to do them on the exact opposite of it. Sort of an artistic thing where you're just getting down to sort of like what you like at this point what you think looks good playing with it you know just play with it it's it's meant to be fun it's sort of a kitschy little wreath to begin with um, don't get all you know don't be all uptight about it there is no wrong um, I like I don't like watching craft videos where there's a wrong way um, I believe in art and I believe that art is an individual creative form and what one person doesn't like another person might so you work with it and make yourself happy with how it looks to make my poinsettias I used this is a studio 12 it's called a flower loom some people call them daisy wheels daisy looms 20s they were real popular 20s and 30s and then in the 60s and 70s, there was another revival of these. I remember my mom in the early 70s making afghans out of these. And they were really great because they were like a loom for women that couldn't crochet. You could make a whole bunch of flowers, and then you could sew your flowers together, and you'd have an afghan. Um, they also make really cute embellishments for hats and everything else. And if you watch that random project video that I posted a while back, just random things, walls I've painted and dolls I've restored and things I've sewn, um, uh, I did a bunch of hats and I used this flower wheel to make the little um, rosettes or the little flowers on the hat. Now I've gone ahead and made, I'm going to show you how to make one, but I've gone ahead and made um, some other ones and I wish I wouldn't have, I don't know, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if I like the full black. I thought that would look cute, but I'm sort of wishing I did the whole flower red and then just did black dots on the poinsettia but at the time when I was planning on it I thought well I thought that the would look cute with the um, black but you know I don't know and show you how to make one I got my red yarn and I all, all the little well this is the tw the um, studio 12 one that, or if I look like complete dookie today it's because I started it took me five days. We've been cleaning out, massively downsizing stuff and cleaning out things. And so 
Uh, it took me five days to photograph everything and then uh, describe everything and weigh all my boxes. And then um, I logged into eBay to start listing it and um, they were going to, I already had 50 free listings and then the eBay was going to give me another 100 but the catch was it had to be done by tonight. So I had 127 lots to list. So basically I worked all day yesterday and then I logged in at 7 o'clock this morning and I worked from 7 to about 4 until I finished them all. And while I was doing that, gratefully, people were buying things <laughs> and asking questions all while I'm trying to list everything before my free listings expired. Anyway, so I'm exhausted, but um, I wanted to get this part of the video done because I've been filming this Obviously, you can tell because my clothes keep changing. I've been filming this video in increments as I had had time to work on my wreath. Because I'm also making a real, my tree skirt that I have, I've had for, oh, I think I bought it when I first moved out. So I was like 21. So I think it's like 30 years old, basically. And it's, I've patched it. It's like a pink. It was, you know, the early 90s. Everything was pink and country blue. And I love pink, obviously. But but anyway, it was a cheap fabric. It was a cheap skirt. I didn't, I mean, I was on teacher salary, beginning teacher salary. I didn't have a lot of money, so I bought what I could get. But anyway, I've made that thing last forever. And so this year I had, at a garage sale, I got a really cool, um, it's the cross-stitch uh, tree skirt with fancy fringe and everything. And I've always wanted to do one, but the just the blank tree skirts by themselves are like 48, 50 bucks. And I don't have that kind of money um, to buy something like that. But I found the tree skirt and the pattern, the cross stitch pattern for $3 at a garage sale, brand new, still in the package, never been opened. I was just ecstatic. Anyway, so last couple months, as soon as I finished that one big like tapestry picture for my daughter that I was working on of her and her um, boyfriend dancing and yeah. Um, I started on the, the tree skirt. Well, I'm creeping up on Christmas. I put my tree up usually um, the day after Thanksgiving because all my kids are usually home, and so we we put the tree up the day after Thanksgiving. Um, so I wanted I wanted I've been really trying to get it done, and I'm, I'm almost done now. But so every time I take time away from working on my tree skirt to do another project for a video or something, it's another night that you know I'm not getting my tree skirt done, and I have a pile of. Uh, dish towels and pillowcases that I also want to do. Um, some are for gifts for Christmas. So those will be a lot faster than the counted cross stitch big tree skirt. I mean, I can whip out a dish towel in a couple hours. So uh, it's just, you know, straight stitch, outline stitch, embroidery. It's not it's not a counted cross stitch or anything like that. So but anyway, let me get back and show you what we're doing here. So you're going to take your daisy wheel. And if you buy one, there'll be instructions with this. So I'm just going to sort of do the and you're going to loop around. Now it's a little bit tricky because you got to keep your, got to make sure you keep your um, loops going the right direction and make sure you push it down as you go around just like a loom. And you're just going to sort of twist and rotate, twist and rotate. And then you're gonna go around, I did for these poinsettias, I went around three times. Oops. I'm gonna pull this through. And it's gonna, the great thing about this has notches in several places, so you can pull it through. And I'm gonna pull out a good length of yarn and just leave it over there, because I'm gonna use that when I start tying. Now, since I did the middles black, like I said, I sort of wish I didn't, but I did. So I'm going to consistent, stay consistent. Um, now I'm going to do the inner ring. I'm going to do black. Now, same thing. Just stick your yarn in here. And you're just going to go around. red that I saved here. So I, I use I saved the red and I'm gonna hold it tight and I'm going to go inside 
and basically what I'm just going to go sew a loop around each flower petal so to speak and the great thing about this is you don't have to be super neat about it because the yarn is very forgiving and on this project no one's going to see the back if I was doing an afghan or something well then I'd have to be real neat about it but push it through the gathers real close to things. So now I have it sewn around. So it's sort of, it's all together now. Now, um, so my thought was, you know how poinsettias have the little like seeds in the middle. So that's why I did the red dot. And that's why I'm w wishing I would have done the whole thing black, I mean, the whole thing red and then just done uh, black dots in the middle on top of the whole red, but I didn't, so so this is what we got. So, whatever. Randomly putting them in there. This also gives you a good way to um, hold, sort of reinforce the center as well. Okay, and, and then to take this off the limb, you don't need a hook or anything, you just sort of basically pull it, slide it off each of the pegs. And you see it starts making the flower now that it's not stretched. And then you go down here and do the same thing on the little row. And there we go. We have a flower. Now I've got black red. I mean the black yarn. So I'm going to be sewing them through basically the middle. How you arrange your set is is totally up to you. Um, like I said, this is the part where you could play with them. Um, uh, first one I want to do is locate the center one. One stitch on each flower. Let's see if you do it this way, you get it hung up and you decide you don't like it. Just take it apart. Snip those threads and you move your inside of somewhere else. getting a wreath and basically just a big long tube you decide like I said I did 32 inches on a 5 inch diameter loom uh, if you didn't want to do poinsettias you could use the same um, flower loom to um, you know like we did the chair booties in the one video you could do little red and white booties and make little Christmas socks and then you could put those on uh, around it it would be cute too so this has been Angie from Canterbury Trails Farm and I hope you had fun with me today Bye.